Okay, Tali, what have you learned? I'm learning a lot. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. Damn right. I've never seen a drive cord like this before. Damn right. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. Ha! <laughs> Heard that before. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. Heard that too. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. I got something advanced for you. Actually, I haven't even seen your face. Um. <laughs> this ship's. Yeah, normally they're not. This ship's pretty special, actually. Wait, are you spying on us? I don't like the idea of aliens studying the architecture of Alliance ships. We're on the same side here. My people have more reason to hate the Geth than anyone, remember? But you can't blame me for being a little excited. I never dreamed I'd get a chance to travel on a ship as advanced as the Normandy. You know, I'm kind of glad the captain gave me his ship. Because, apparently, we've got the baddest hot rod around. So, you're into ships, are you? I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. <laughs> that sucks. Your ships are old and stupid. Ours are new and awesome. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. I see. Uh, again, a lot of information to process, but weren't the Quarians the ones that wiped out the uh, Krogans? Not that I care, but I think that's their history link. Oh, I can't remember. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. The Conclave is anything like our... Alliance or the Council? That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. I like that. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials? In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. Wow. Why is this all important, though? 
How come you're the only one that opens up this much to me? You're giving me information on your people's history, how much you like ships, how your government is run, what resources you do and don't have, how many children your parents can have, when they can have more, all kinds of stuff. Why are you the only one opening up this much to me? Uh, I'm afraid to ask you about other things, because you're just one of those yak 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 kind of people. Uh, but I am interested in your stupid little pilgrimage. Just a little bit, though. This is going to be it. I'm not going to ask you anything about the Geth. I know you hate them. That's all I need to know. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. Us. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Hmm. So you're looking to find something of value with me. You seem nice enough, so I don't think you're actually going to rob me of anything. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? Uh, that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. Hmm. Dang it, that kind of sucks. But if you'll be accepted back anyway, you could technically bring, like, my shoe to them. You could be like, this is the shoe of the first human specter. And you can really play it up. I can even sign it or whatever. Uh, if you want, I can even, like, rub it all over my chest so it gets the scent of my cologne. And then they can get that and be like... Oh, this is what Spectres smell like. Yeah, uh, actually that sounds pretty good. If I gave you my shoe, and you went back to them right now, would they accept that as a gift? <laughs> if I give you my shoe, it will be the most dangerous shoe you've ever given your captain. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. That's not going to happen with you. You're going to die. Because you serve on my crew. Let me tell you what's going to happen to my crew. Ashley is going to realize the absolute most intense orgasm she has ever felt. And then she's going to die in battle. Caden is going to break that giant computer chip or whatever and it's going to destroy that half of the Normandy and I'm going to have a chance to save him he's going to be like hanging out into space uh, by some sort of like large cable and I'm going to have it in my hands he's going to be like captain save me or yeah captain save me and I'll be like pulling on the I'm not going to let him die I'm like pulling on the cable trying to bring him back in and then, like, something's going to happen that's going to put me in some sort of moral quandary. Like, for example, you actually might be in that part of the ship, and you'll, like, go flying out. So I'll have to, like, choose to save your life or his. And then in an attempt to save you both, I'm going to let you both die. So you're both going to die like that. Um, and I'll send your helmet thing back to your, back to your fleet as a gift, and hopefully they'll accept me into your community. And then I can be an honorary, honorary quarian, because, you know, I'm going to guess your helmet's... Uh, valuable. And even if it's not, you said they'll accept it anyway, so uh, that's kind of what's going to happen there. Rex is going to die in battle, and I'm not going to care. He's a resource to me. Once Rex actually does die, uh, the only thing I will mourn is the loss of a good gunner. Uh, my requisitions officer is going to die, because I'm going to show up. He's going to try and charge me too much. I'm going to be in a bad mood. I might be drunk. 
I'm going to be drunk a lot in this ship, by the way. I might be drunk, and I'm going to shoot him in the face because he charges me too much. I'm going to take all those licenses back, and I'm going to present them to uh, myself. You know what? I might as well start dealing my own deals. You know, I don't have to pay for all this stuff all the time. I have to pay one of my own crew members for that kind of thing. Who are we missing? Uh, Garrus. Garrus. He's... Uh, I'm going to try and keep him alive as long as possible, but he's going to die eventually, too. He seems to be the durable type. He seems to be somebody who can really take care of himself, though. So he might be the only one that survives my wrath. I mean, my crew. It's not really my wrath. But anyway, what I'm trying the point that I'm trying to get across to you here is that you're not going to make it back to your crew. You're going to die in some form under my command. It happens to everybody <laughs> under my command. Don't you know my history? Even if I... I mean... Even if there's a chance that it's not going to happen, I'm going to probably try and make sure it happens because, you know, i got a reputation to upkeep here. Um, but, you know, we shouldn't talk about that right now. I want to talk about something else. Like what? I don't know. I would ask you about the Geth, but this conversation has gone on way too long. This whole conversation might be a whole video, and it's your fault that it was a boring video. You're stupid. I should go. 